Hi everyone, I'm Chi Zheng Kwan and this is Hock Sheng Tang. We're both from the Department of Diagnostic Radiology, the University of Hong Kong. Today, we're going to present our manuscript on pronostic utility of cardiac MRI, myocardial strain parameters in patients with ischemic and non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, a multi-center study. We'll first introduce what is myocardial strain. Myocardial strain measures the degree of deformation of a myocardial segment from its initial length to maximal length. In the diagram on the right, it shows the definition of various myocardial strains. For radial strain, it measures the systolic thickening of ventricular wall. While for circumferential strain, it measures the systolic shortening of ventricular chamber circumference. And lastly, for longitudinal strain, it measures the systolic shortening of ventricular chamber length. For a topic, dilated cardiomyopathy, it describes patients with left ventricular dilatation and impaired systolic function. Previous studies have shown conflicting results regarding the pronostic significance of feature tracking in patients with DCM. Earlier research has generally comprised single-center single studies with small sample sizes and low numbers of adverse events and only one study included patients with ischemic DCM, with the rest evaluating only patients with non-ischemic DCM. From this study published by Fong et al., it summarized previous studies on the pronostic value of myocardial strain in DCM. We can see that, except for Romano et al., all other papers only included patients with non-ischemic DCM and had a relatively small sample size. The annual event rate ranges from 9% to 35%. Bus et al. and Romano et al. showed that worse LVGLS is associated with adverse outcomes, while the other four papers showed no significance. For our study, the research questions are to evaluate the pronostic utility of facial tracking parameters on cardiac MRI in patients with ischemic and non-ischemic DCM and to determine the optimal strain parameter for outcome prediction. Our study is a, is a retrospective cohort study. We've included 471 patients. 233 patients has, had a, has ischemic DCM, and 238 patients had non-ischemic DCM. The median follow-up period is 3.6 years, and patients were recruited from four hospitals or units. For the primary outcome, 125 patients had all-cause mortality and 95 patients had heart failure hospitalization. For cardiac MRI analysis, left ventricular and right ventricular volume and functional assessment were performed on the short axis cine images. Late gadolinium enhancement quantification was performed on short axis phase sensitive inversion images. And for feature tracking, was performed on LV and RV global radial strain, global circumferential strain, and global longitudinal strain. For statistical analysis, univariable and multivariable Cox regression models were performed to identify predictors of the composite outcome. For multivariable analysis, all variables with a p-value less than 0 0.05 in univariable analysis were included in the models. The presence of LGE was included in the multivariable models regardless of its significance in univariable analysis because of the recognized role of LGE as a prognostic parameter in patients with DCM. Because of the collinearity between the strain parameters for a given ventricle, three separate multivariable Cox regression models were built, one including LVGRS and RVGRS, one including LVGCS and RVGCS, and one including LVGLS and RVGLS. Also, log rent tests were performed and Kaplan mile curves were plotted by turtles for the myocardial strain parameters. So here are the results of the univariable analysis. The MRI parameters that were significant predictors of the composite outcome included age, corrected LV and RV EDV, LV and RV EF, corrected LA area, as well as all six myocardial strain parameters. 
And these are the results of multivariable cost regression models. Our first model included H, EDP, and EF of both ventricles, presence of LGE, as well as LV and RV global radial strains. While the second model included LV and RV GCS, and the third one included LV and RV GLS. In these three models, the only strain parameters that was that was a significant independent predictor of the composite outcome was LV GLS. The remaining strain parameters were not significant. And here are the Kepler markers by Turtles for event-free survival in all patients. For all strain parameters, Lockland tests show that patients with values indicating lesser myocardial strain for GLS and greater myocardial strain for GCS and GLS has significantly higher rates of composite outcome. To conclude, our study revealed that both LV and RV myocardial strain parameters on MRI were significant predictors of adverse outcomes in patients with DCM. Only LVGLS was a significant independent predictor in multivariable analysis among the strain parameters. Finally, these are the acknowledgments. Thank you.